Well, hello, friends. Thanks for joining us for today as we gather for our weekly podcast, as we prepare for this coming Sunday, a word on repentance. But that word for me, Steve, begins, or the word repentance begins with what we connected to last week, and that's when we hit rock bottom. Yeah. Rock bottom is a place I think many of us have found and, and, and never intended to find it, but found ourselves in, yeah. a, in a rock and a hard place where there was no way to go. But, yeah. And, and I, I told you, I went back and watched your sermon, and, I, and, and it, it resonated with me, and I, I think about how those places when we hit rock bottom, we, we never intended to go there. And, mm-hmm. you know, like the 17-year-old person who, who thinks they know everything, um, yet we find ourselves walking paths of destruction, and then the destruction comes. And, of course, the despair, the hopelessness, uh, the oh, woe is me, comes yeah. with that. Yeah, the idea that don't have a future. Don't have And you can't see what... A pathway forward. I think that's that's a big part of it. And, I, and I've I've ministered to lots of people over the last twenty five years, and many times it's been just that I don't have a future. I don't know what to do. I I'm lost. So as we as we make the move in this uh, next week in this parable from from this young man who has squandered all of his possessions, finds himself feeding pigs, and he arrives at this this critical moment where he's hungry, he's lost, meaning he is no longer a part of the community. He's He's lost his family. He has reached desperation stage. And it so resonates, I think, with me and experiences I've had, I'm sure for you and your experiences, but it, it gets me starting to think about change and the absolute necessity <laughs> of change, the absolute impossibility of change, and, and how difficult change is for us sometimes until that rock bottom moment comes when we don't have any choice. Well, one of the things that, I, and you, we've served churches about the same length of time, uh, churches really don't like to change. True. and. People don't even like to change where they where they sit. Um, <laughs> when my wife and I got married, we got married at North Canapolis United Methodist Church, and we had some just wonderful folks there. They were really kind people, but they had their seats. And we had some older ladies who had cushions in their seats. So that's where they sat every Sunday to the point where they had a cushion for their back. And so Marcy and I are getting married, and we uh, we look out and, you know, want the day to be perfect. We get married in that, that church, and there's all these cushions out. Well, we're bringing in a completely different group of people, right? So the uh, ushers, who were all my friends and groomsmen, they're like, what do you want us to do with all these cush- cushions? Because they're all different colors, like lime green. And, oh, it was. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I'm like, just put them back there in that back closet. Well, guess who the first people to show up for the wedding were? People looking for their cushions. And then when they couldn't find their cushions, oh my Lord. They couldn't even change where they sat for one day for what would be a 30-minute service. Uh, It was, yeah. So people don't like change. I guess that's a long story to say something you already know. That's what preaching is. It's telling long stories to tell you what you already know. (laughs) So we were going to spend a few moments today thinking about change. The impossibility of change and and how change comes and or what s- seems like the impossibility it seems like the impossibility of change and and I was talking with Steve earlier I, I had someone important in my life who who had a couple of uh, health habits that probably weren't in his favor and went to a doctor the doctor looked at him said uh, do you, you have a wife yeah you love your wife yep yeah, love and wife uh, kids, yeah, got uh, two two kids. Love them. Oh yeah, love my two kids. Uh, grandkids, yeah, I actually have some grandkids. You love them. Oh yeah, love my grandkids. And he said, well, he said you you've got a choice. He said um, you're 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 going to have an opportunity to 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 change in hopes that things will will get better for your health. Or you're going to have those kids and grandkids having to come and and find you in a bed and and uh, wiping the drool off your mouth. And uh, changing your changing your diapers, he said. Uh, how you how you feel about that? 
and 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 as this person was telling me the story, you could just see this profound sense of man, this you, doc, you you you've just gotten to a deep part that um, that that seemed awfully harsh, mm -hmm. but it was the reality. It was reality that if if this person didn't change, mm -hmm. there was a, a course of action that was going to lead to this or or the possibility that that you might be able to recover well, from that. Well, most times we only make the change because the what <laughs> that event is imminent and, or has already happened. I think about, well, look what we're doing today. If we had not encountered COVID-19, would we be doing video podcast? Mm -mm. Um, would we have upped our game on the technology side? Uh, very doubtful. Would, I mean, I know here at Huntersville, uh, over at Denver, and many other churches have really had to invest very quickly in technology they never would have embraced if it weren't for this whole COVID-19 thing. Mm. Um, that's forced change upon us and it and it has changed and will I think forever change how we connect with people. That's not necessarily a bad thing it's just the reality that we would not have gone there unless we had to. So I think about the impossibility of change or the, the seeming impossibility of change and as you say it only typically comes when we when we get to a place of desperation, when we get to a point at which we, we seemingly have no alternative. But I, I think about uh, things that we, we have in our church. We have uh, accountability groups. We have groups like AA, uh, NAMI, which are mental health groups. And, and I, I, I reflect upon, Steve, the, if change ever does come, it is almost certainly not going to come when we try to rely upon our own resources for and, that change. And I think that's the key to this. this. This young man realizes that if I'm going to have a different life, I can't do it by myself. Right? He can't pull himself up out of the pig pen on his own. He has to rely upon someone else's strength to provide for him. And that, that's, a, uh, that's a tough moment. Yeah, I think about the times when, say, you have a strained relationship. Uh, your economic situation has become untenable. You think about uh, a, a job situation in which, uh, and I, if I have to get up and do this one more day, I just <laughs> don't think I can physically make myself get up and do this one more day. I, th I think about the, the times in various places, relationships, jobs, economics, uh, on down the line, health. We often get to those places where if, if we don't change or mm -hmm. if we don't consider how change is, is, is at least possible, then, man, the, the hole just seems to just go well, deeper and but deeper it is, and you know, get stuck in the it, mire. It sounds like a country music song, and it probably is, but you know, if, if you've dug yourself a hole, stop digging. Stop digging right? is the first don't, thing. If you've hit rock bottom, don't go don't go start drilling holes and planting dynamite to blast the rock. You know, take, there's a, uh, there, there has to be a moment of realization. And that's kind of what we'll talk about tomorrow is what is that moment of realization? Because it has to begin deep within our soul that we want to, and we have to, with our will, decide to, make a change. And, and the issue is that our will is damaged. That's, that's part of a theological conundrum, right? The, the, our decision-making process is damaged because of sin and brokenness, uh, alienation from God. And so part of making the right decision is to get realigned with God and to make sure that our will can ask God to heal us so that we can make good decisions. Earlier, you mentioned uh, Richard Rohr, and you f said he had two, two thoughts yeah. about change. Yeah, he, he writes, and if you've never read any of Richard Rohr stuff, it's very, I find it fascinating and in interesting. But he said that really the only way that people change is through either great love or great pain. Mm. Um, and if you think about that, it makes a lot of sense. Like great pain, death, loss, that often precipitates change in people. Um, great love, you have a child, that changes your life. You get married, you fall in love, that hopefully fall in love and get married, but however you want to do it, uh, it changes your life. Those are the things that, that have the 
ability to reset our hearts and minds. What's fascinating about that is, uh, Rohr goes on to say, is both of those are, avail- are in the cross of Jesus. Mm. It's, it's the great pain of loss, brokenness, of humanity, of sin, evil, um, in one direction, and the great love of Christ, of God Almighty, in the other. And so there's, that's part of why the cross of Jesus Christ stands at the hinge of history. It does change the course of human history. Uh, and there it is, love and pain, but the, mm-hmm. the love of God overcomes the, the pain of the world. Yeah, C.S. Lewis uh, once wrote that God whispers to us in life and yet shouts to us in our pain. And that's always resonated with me. I'm, I'm slow to learn, <laughs> uh, slow to make changes where necessary, and, and oftentimes find myself in places where I, I, I'm just you know, in enough pain to where you've got yeah. to do something different. And I think about that, and I, I'm also a Bruce Springsteen fan and was listening to music earlier, and one step up and two steps back, I'm the same old story, same old act. One step up, two steps back. I, I, I'm going to guess that resonates with people that we have best intentions. Yeah. We, we somehow think we desire to change for things to be different, but what does it take to actually, actually make that so, shift? So, so tomorrow we're going to talk about what that looks like. We're going to talk about the theological underpinnings of how we actually make a change. So thank you for being with us today. Uh, and, and do know, if if you're in one of those places where you feel like you're at the bottom, uh, you're not alone. Um, plenty of people have been there before you. People will be there after you, but there is a future, and we're going to talk a little bit more about how to get to that future tomorrow when we come back. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you.